Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash inside. That's good. Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Thursday. Today we've got video games with ultimate editions that give you more video game. But first, we are joined by a guest you may know from What's Good Games. It's Rihanna. Hey. Woo! Hot cha It was getting like a little Rihanna. I love it. It was a really hype welcome. We are all about getting more video game here at Inside Gaming. But today's story is actually like a little bit shady, I think. It did take me a while to figure out how I feel about this, but we'll get into it. Even if a puller is trying their damn hardest to seem like they're not ripping you off, sometimes they probably are. They're just getting sneakier about it. Yeah, so according to IGN, existing owners of Control on console won't get a free update to its PS5 or Xbox Series X versions, but those who buy a new Ultimate Edition will. That basically means that Control, which won IGN's Game of the Year last year and was actually number five on Inside Gaming's far superior Game of the Year list. I'm so glad you had to read that. Thank you. You're absolutely (laughs) right. Far superior. Area. You, we didn't that. say it, you said it, so yeah, it's no. legit. Inside Gaming now makes the top of What's Good Games best list of games games <laughs> list. List of games, game of the year game list. The yeah. Best, yeah. The best game list of games and the best. It's the, be- <laughs> the year. Is sneaking in a way to make you pay extra to play the game on the next generation hardware, which is not really any different from what 2K is doing. If you somehow missed that story, it has been confirmed that 2K will be looking to charge $70 for select next gen titles and and in a recent earnings call, Activision president Rob Kostich was asked about the company's plans regarding pricing for their next-gen games, and he had this to say. What I'll say here is we'll be sharing our plans soon. For now, we're just very excited for the launch of the new generation of hardware. We think it represents another strong leap forward in creating really incredible entertainment and value for our fans as we move forwards. But basically, that quote read to us as if the answer was no, and that you weren't going to have games be more expensive on next-gen hardware, you probably just say no. Seems like something is in the works there. We're not dumb Activision. We know you wanted more of our money yesterday, just like 2K with the mm. select titles. And now 505 Games, the publishers of Control, are seemingly on that same bandwagon. They're just doing it a little bit differently. Yeah, regarding Control, IGN wrote, the Ultimate Edition was announced today and will be released on Steam on August 27th, followed by the Epic Game Store, PS4, and Xbox One versions on September 10th. It will come with all previous upgrades in both of the game's expansions. Mm. It is interesting that uh, this game was an Epic Game Store exclusive and is now, this version is on Steam first and then on everything (laughs) else. I hate exclusivity. Jesus Christ, it's confusing. And then, of course, alongside that news came the much worse news that, to quote IGN, uh, not the best list of games, by the way, those who (laughs) bought the console versions of the Ultimate Edition will get a free digital upgrade to the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions of the game when they arrive, but those who already own the game on console will not. For context, Control Ultimate Edition will cost $39.99 or £34.99 or etc. <laughs> and <laughs> it does mean that if you didn't own the Ultimate Edition and you go out and buy it now, you'd also have access to expansions that you didn't with the base game. In theory, you aren't just paying for next-gen access, but considering Control is really beloved and sort of undersold, it just seems like such a bad way to treat the people who supported the game initially. I am one of those people, and I feel about a bit shady about this. Yeah. Like, I bought yeah. the, the Foundation expansion, and I'm excited about about Alan Wake and I bought the game and now I'm like, cool, great, can't play that next gen. And I would have liked to because of the ray tracing. (laughs) Yeah. It it is a big bummer. You would think that a game that was so big on ray tracing before so many others, you think they would want to get that on as many PS5s and Xbox Series Xs as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a showcase piece, right? Right, so like, why not deep discount that in launch month? Mm -hmm. Get get it on there, show show people what puddles look like. I mean, I think the answer is ultimately that it's 505 Games' choice rather than Remedy choice. I don't think Remedy would have done that by choice, but we'll get into that. Like I said, this kind of applies to me. I mean, this whole thing only actually works if you aren't a season pass holder or someone who already bought the two expansions, which is the Foundation and AWE. Which again, the more hardcore supporters of Control, who are all about supporting the game, probably already have done that. Basically, in an era of backwards compatibility, making people pay for a next-gen port just doesn't really feel good. Like, we're past that, right? What feels even worse is that we already know that the game's developer, Remedy, they don't even get half of the revenue for every copy of the game they sell. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go on a bit of a 
tangent here, okay? Because just because it adds some some important context. So according to Tweakdown, to get Control made, Remedy signed a substantial multi-year deal with publisher 505 Games. In exchange for 20 years publishing exclusivity on Control, 505 Games would distribute, market, and inject millions into Control's development. And for an independent developer, deals like this aren't uncommon, but the revenue split does seem brutal. According to the financial report Remedy released in December of last year, for Control, Remedy receives 45% of the game sales net revenue. That's just net revenue, which means... Yeah, net. Yeah, so like to, to continue that quote uh, from the financial report, the revenue share for Remedy is calculated from net sales, which takes into account deductions from gross sales, such as retail and marketing costs of the game. These deductions are upfront loaded and affect revenue share calculation negatively, especially in the first months of game sales. Remedy did add that Control was performing well enough for them, despite never topping any charts, though, Push Square said. According to the studio CEO, Tara Vertala, the PlayStation 4 project Project was developed over the course of three years and utilized a budget of 30 million. Oh God, what is that? Euros. Euros. 30 million euros. <laughs> Uh, oh. Europe bucks. 30 million Europeans. That's actually a pretty small amount of money for a AAA title with a publisher. Just a casual 30 million, like pennies, really. For TalkSoulGamesIndustry.biz, we don't quite require the same huge lifetime numbers as many other games with bigger development budgets. Therefore, even though Control didn't have chart-topping sales right from the get-go, we are in a good position with steady sales. We always take the long view here. Basically, we're giving you an idea of Remedy's financial situation here. They signed a big deal with a publisher who are absolutely the ones calling the shots where basically all the finances are concerned. But no matter what, majority of that money isn't going to the developer, it is going to 505 Games. Yeah, but before we keep talking about cool stuff like games, well, let's let's talk about something else that's pretty cool. Uh, movies and TV shows. Uh, you can watch all your favorites on HBO Max, by the way. It's an ad break. Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by HBO Max. Y'all, we're dragging into the dog days of summer. I don't know when those are exactly, but it feels like it's in mid to late August. Thus, the dog days are upon us. And you wanna sit down and watch a movie you enjoy. Maybe you've seen it a hundred times. Maybe you've never seen it. Either way, HBO Max is there for you, dog. They've got you. If you wanna watch Space Jam and relive that part of your childhood, it's on there. If you wanna go back even further, North by Northwest, Cary Grant, a vision. HBO Max has everything you need. You will never get bored. There are so many movies. And it has everything you love. It's all in one place. And it's entertainment for everyone. If you want to throw on Crazy Stupid Love, Ryan Gosling and Steve Carell. If you want to watch Studio Ghibli, I've I've admittedly not seen too much of it, but I will say I love Spirited Away. And if I want to watch more, and I do, and I will, it's all there on HBO Max for me. It's got everything. It's got new movies. It's got old movies. It's got movies that are kind of in the middle that could be seen as new or old. So start streaming today. Visit bit.ly slash HBO Max Gaming to sign up uh, where you can get a seven day free trial for new subscribers. Again, that is bit.ly slash HBO Max Gaming to sign up. So yeah, we're rounding out the summer. An odd one, admittedly, but why not finish it out with some great movies? Check out Ad Astra if you want to see some sad dad action with Brad Pitt and Tommy Lee Jones. I might have to check that one out again. And now back to the show. To get into some more specifics about the Ultimate Edition itself, Control's website says we're excited to unveil Control Ultimate Edition, the complete Control package featuring the Foundation and AWE expansions coming to current gen and next gen consoles, as well as PC. Uh, and when we say PC, yes, we're also talking about Steam. That's, again, like you said, funny, seeing the way the world just kind of flips with exclusivity like that. Which, yeah, the game no longer being an Epic exclusive is pretty great, mm -hmm. but they also mentioned an FAQ and IGN dug into it, writing, the free upgrade path to the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 version of Control is only available for Control Ultimate Edition. The FAQ also confirms that next-gen versions of the game will arrive digitally by the end of 2020. So, mm -hmm. not sure exactly when that is. So, it is also worth noting, you'll get upgrades for Control as part of buying the Ultimate Edition at some date that you don't even actually know yet. Of course, it isn't mandatory for games to give you forward-thinking cross-platform access for free. We get it. This just feels like the start of a trend that we don't really want. Yeah, do you guys feel like like we're being entitled here? Like, I feel like this is something that, as someone who has supported this game, like, I, I feel like it sucks. But I'm like, I don't know. Should, is, am I expecting a, a I, more work for free? I don't know. I think there's already a precedent for this kind of action by a publisher. Like, they're not by any means the first to do it, but I don't think that makes it a, a good thing to do. Paying extra for the same game you've already bought and supported just isn't a very appealing deal, even if Control's expansions are really good and I really like Control. And we do already know of other titles that aren't 
doing this and yeah. will give you access to free PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X upgrades such as Square Enix's Marvel's Avengers game and CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, TechSpot also pointed out that Bethesda announced it would provide free next-gen upgrades for Doom Eternal and The Elder Scrolls Online to those who already own the games, not giving current control owners who may have already shelled out up to 85 bucks for it. Uh, access to next-generation optimizations seems a bit like a slap in the face in that light. You generally agree Text bot. While simultaneously being very excited about the game's Alan Wake expansion that's coming out on August 27. A year to the date that the game Hell came yeah. out. But, you know, related, we did just get gameplay this morning on Remedy's Twitch of the Alan Wake uh, expansion. I was watching it while writing the script. It looks pretty cool. So it seems the next-gen price wars continue, and we can only hope that other publishers follow suit with the likes of Cyberpunk and Marvel's Avengers, where upgrades are concerned, rather than following whichever other publisher announced a price increase first. That's kind of what I'm worried about, is one person does the thing that sucks, and then they're all like, we could do the sucky thing too. And in some ways, early adopters do kind of get screwed in general, just like getting in when the software or the hardware isn't quite worked out, but this does feel a little bit shitty. Mm -hmm. Never early adopt. Wait until the last possible second. That's why <laughs> I am but months from buying a PS4. Oh, really? Work no. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Wednesday. It is a hump day, and why don't we have someone hump for the inevitability of our impending doom? That could be like a fun setup. I'll hump for just about anything. Like sure, a hand 